We are honored to have so many, so many wonderful people. And uh, next, we have Reverend Strong King. We have kings and queens. And... <laughs> Please. I love you. Good evening. I'm Kristen Stone King, Executive Director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation, the oldest and largest interfaith peace and justice organization in the nation. We're headquartered in New York. The Fellowship of Reconciliation is the birthplace of the Muslim Peace Fellowship and also connected with American Muslim Voice as one of our affiliates. We are proud and grateful to have uh, awarded its founder, Samina Sundas, our National Peace Award in 2007. And we work together to combat Islamophobia and um, further interreligious understanding across the nation and across the globe. Even though my office is in New York, I still make my home in Davis, where I served for many years as a campus pastor to UC Davis. And during that time, built a six townhouse development across from campus where students of all faiths now live together, supporting each other in community and furthering peace and justice. Many of you in this room were people who helped make that development and that community happen and so I continue to be grateful to you and know that you are the people who are continually lifting up uh, hope and peace among us. Uh, the multi-faith living community as it is called is now a national model of interreligious understanding and cooperation and peace building but in the process of bringing it to fruition I encountered the Islamophobia that can live just under the surface in our community. Some who opposed the project wondered aloud at public meetings that if Muslim students were going to live in this community, should we be concerned about a bomb, one woman said, as if Muslims and violence are synonymous. Another sent an email to the city of Davis asking if the Davis police knew that Muslims and Jews were planning on living next door to each other, as if that combination would only lead to violence. And this was in 2005, 2006, 2007, and unfortunately, anti-Muslim hate speech has only gotten worse since then. These biases were countered and responded to, and the project was built and opened in 2008 and now stands as a living response to these incendiary comments and as a symbol to the power and potential of people of faith standing up for each other and for relationship and for peace. But the experience showed me how Islamophobia shows up in our lives even when we think we are in safe environments or progressive communities. It showed me the ways that imagined concerns and fear of Muslim people by people who actually have nothing to be afraid of create then with their fear a real environment of fear for Muslims. Unchecked assumptions and offhand comments such as these perpetuate a climate of suspicion and fear that must be constantly countered. And so what we're doing tonight, we're checking in with each other, we're encouraging each other and committing to checking in with our Muslim neighbors and colleagues and friends and acquaintances, making sure they know where we stand, seeing if they're all right. But we also need to check in with our non-Muslim neighbors, colleagues, acquaintances, and this is particularly for the non-Muslims in the group. And try to surface what is under the surface. Because the Islamophobia is there. And if we don't bring it above the surface, we have no opportunity to counter it. We have no opportunity to educate. We have no opportunity to gently, compassionately, with love, dispel ignorance and bias with courage and always with commitment. And so I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Your presence gives me hope. 
um, let us say with one voice that the people united shall never be defeated. And we are united tonight against Islamophobia, against fear, against hate. We are united against the rhetoric of incitement that turns to violence. There is no question that violence begets violence, but so too does kindness and courage and solidarity beget goodness and strength and peace. Let us be agents of courage and kindness and peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that was a very deep thought. I think what we need to understand is that just like how beauty is skin deep, hate is actually also just skin deep. I think people are responding to skin colors. They're responding to Sikhs with beards. And how many innocent Sikhs have died, unfortunately, because just the way they look. I think we really need to go and look underneath those layers and reach out to the hearts of each other. And perhaps that is where we're going to find the real peace. I now call upon Jonathan Molina Holy Holy Rosary, Holy Rosary Church. Yes. Well, thank you. My my name is not in the program. It's uh, Sylvina's name. <laughs> and uh, she asked me you know, to, to do this, and if you know Sylvina, if she asks you to do something, you better say yes. <laughs> no, I, I'm a priest, I'm not married, you know, I don't have a wife, but I guess, you know, I've, I've learned, you know, the magic word, yes, dear. <laughs> There's a little story I, I shared uh, this morning with uh, the Catholic community at Mass. A grandma talking with her grandchild and they were just visiting and the grandma asked the little girl do you love me and the little girl just looked at her and said nothing do you love me this much and the little girl you know just shook her head how about this much and the little girl you know said nothing just look at grandma and finally the little girl said Nana I love you. This. <laughs> this much. My hope and my prayer is that all of us, we continue to love one another. <laughs> that much and even more. Thank you and God bless you. Remember I said when there's a change in churches, administration, or clergy, I get nervous. <laughs> it happened. Thank God for Selvina. If she was not here, we would not have Holy Rosary with us all these years. <laughs> since, Father, since Father John Bowl left, she is my Father John Bowl. <laughs> Selvina, where is she? Anyhow, thank you very much. So, uh, Father, you are new in there, and we welcome you to Woodland, and please stay active. Thank you very much. One of the side benefit of programs like this is, we have friends, we have future friends, we make them here. And this is what happened. This time, when this news went about this event, hands around mosque, I met a few new people, few new future friends, and among them is my friend over here. Sir, could you come here for a minute? Yes, yes. <laughs> I have his neurologist. neurologist. <laughs> I want to share a brief moment in my own personal salvation history. I was a missionary in West Africa of over 60 years ago and in a small village 300 miles up a dirt road from the capital of Monrovia in a town called Bolohan, Holy Cross Mission. 
And the story of how that came to be is very interesting and a symbol of the profound respect and gratitude I have for the Muslim community. Because the bishop, the Episcopal Bishop of Liberia, invited the Order of the Holy Cross to go and work at some particular point in the country that had no schools, no hospitals, no leper colony, no rural development program. And the Muslim community in the town of Masabala said, come here. We'll give you the land, we'll give you the support, we'll give you our children. And so it has been for almost a hundred years. It makes me kind of choke up to think of it. But every time they had a funeral feast, we were there. Every time we had a funeral feast, they were there. So this deep abiding respect and affection for the generosity of the Muslim community. And it's true today, it's still there, it's still going on. And I just want to pay tribute to that in a special way of that abiding generosity of the Muslim community to reach out to the Christians, come, here's the land. Of course, we had a hospital, we had schools, we had rural development, we had a leper colony, and we became one thing. And so when we the monks were praying in the morning, we were called to prayer by the drums in the next town. The Muslim drums would start us in our morning prayer. For that, I'm deeply thankful and deeply thankful to Mr. Saeed and to all of you for making this event possible. It's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I now call upon Professor Helen Rowland from Celebration of Abraham. Oh. So, Father Connor Lynn. Oh, that was him. I'm sorry. I think we're coming to the end of the list here. Mufti Munib Ar Rahman. I think I'll take over. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's all my fault, and she's getting all the blame. He's because women are strong. <laughs> Actually, um, we had a visiting guest from Pakistan and he was thinking to, uh, she was calling his name and he couldn't make it because of his travel right now. So uh, I apologize for that. Uh, well, well, are you lonely these days? I am. Christian is not here. I know. <laughs> I'm very lonely. My wife has gone to Montana. But we'll we'll give you show you all the love, man. <laughs> well, I am uh, Will Norman from St. John's United Church of Christ. Um, proud to be following in the footsteps of Reverend Bill Schrader here. Uh, I am horribly underprepared, but incredibly overwhelmed with the work that is being done in this community and by individuals in this community, uh, by the number of folks who have come out tonight to stand in solidarity with one another and to show our love across religious bounds. Um, I am a visitor currently in the United Church of Christ. I'm actually a Presbyterian minister serving in the UCC right now, and and the, the motto for the UCC, one of the probably thousands of mottos that the UCC has, but uh, <laughs> is that they may all be one. It comes from Jesus' pastoral prayer in John 14. And, uh, and to me, as I think about what we're doing here and what I'm doing here, it strikes me that I am at my most faithful as a Christian when I am in a loving, compassionate relationship with all of you. And I believe that we are all our most faithful as Muslims, as Jews, as Sikhs as Buddhists when we are in loving and compassionate relationship with one another. Um, and so I am, I am grateful. I put my stole on because I did my best to not eat when I got here tonight. I, I had a late lunch and I thought, I need to not eat. Uh, but then someone handed me a plate of food. And it was so delicious and I realized I was participating in this gigantic community meal. Uh, and in the Christian tradition, obviously, a meal is, a meal is something that, that we find to be incredibly sacred. It's, it's at the center of our worship service. And um, I could not be happier or more thankful than to have had the opportunity to share this meal with all of you. And I hope that we'll continue to do it out in the community here. We need to love each other loudly and in public. So I, I look forward to it. Thank you so much, Father Connor.
I think one uh, wonderful thing about everybody who's speaking is they are looking to do this moving forward. And I think that is the most important message of this evening. I liked what you said, uh, Reverend Bill Schroeder. You said we have to walk the talk. And soon thereafter, Khalid Said says, oh, I thought I just came to. And then knowing my mind, I said, oh, he doesn't like to exercise. So, <laughs> but, but, but instead, he, he's more scared of his wife, it seems, which is also a good thing. <laughs> I would now like to call upon Ken Ruten uh, to say a few words. I just promised if I didn't look out there, I'd be okay. <laughs> so I'll look this way. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy to uh, represent the Baha'is of Woodland. And uh, uh, this is a wonderful gathering. It's wonderful. And tonight, all of us will sleep better. Thank you. That was profound. I think we are at the end of the list. If we have missed anybody, um, please let us know. Huh. So moving forward, the most important uh, part of the evening, important for me because I'm trying to create a visual image of what um, interfaith is all about. Uh, we really want it to become a visual image of how beautiful religions are. Um, I'm. I know all of you are aware that every religion has a color, um, and that is the theme for today. If you look at the backdrop here, I tried to incorporate as many colors as I could, uh, and also, it was a lot of fun. I would Google and say, Jews, and then I would see what color, and then I would match the material for it. So it was just a beautiful experience. I, go, I got to learn a lot about religions. I, as you see, I've put the American flag in the middle because you know, ultimately, this is our nation. We are proud Americans. And I think the idea is to create a confluence of all these beautiful colors and show religion in its true light, and that is in the colors. I'm going to take just one minute to um, help you see that there is a lot of meaning behind these colors. And I learned a lot from it, and I think uh, I would love to share this with you. So the color white is for Christianity, and it's the simplest color, and it represents light. Yellow is for Buddhism, and it is for earth. Green is for Muslims, and that is water. Blue is for Jewish, and it is air. Red, and tones of red is for Sikh and Hindus, and that stands for fire. Black stands for night. What struck me is that not one of those depictions of colors can do without the other. So I'm really not sure what we're fighting about because we need, we need light, we need earth, water, air, fire, and night because without the night, there's no day. So we really need to embrace all these beautiful things. The other, uh, the other thing that I learned was that each of these colors are associated with an emotion. So red is for courage, green for curative powers. How ironical that it came into our lap, because it looks like Muslims have the burden of curing this <laughs> illness in this world. Yellow is for gentleness, orange, the force of life, blue, purity, purple, strength, pearl gray, happiness, violet, relief of sadness, Azure, calmness, and pink is chastity. So if, if, I, if I think about it, I think this is a beautiful way to start uh, the culture of peace by bringing together all the colors this evening. I want to invite Khalid Said to talk about the significance of holding hands this evening and creating this visual image for our youth and for the world to show that we actually walk the talk by holding hands and by bringing together all the colors. Thank you.
Uh, it's almost there, so just hang in there. Uh, the event is called Hands Around the Mosque. Hands Around the Mosque. And it will be hands around the church and synagogue and temples and all of that. And we will be talking to like-minded people and uh, hosting these events. There are already several offers to us to host it at their place of worship. So that's very encouraging. Please give everybody a hand. It gives you reassurance. So long talks, so I'm just gonna close it at that. We will be have a hand holding ceremony here and we light the candles also. It was not a uh, candlelight vigil type of thing. Okay. We are adults and we wanted to make it a little different and have us all understand or be more aware of it. And when we go out, we uh, share these with our children and get them ready for next generation for community of peace and love. So, uh, we will be holding hands, and Dr. Firdos here, she wrote something very, very poetic and very uh, uh, profound. She will be reading that, and then we will uh, do go through some exercise. In order to, you know, in order to create a message, um, I sat one night and uh, decided I had to jog my um, literary uh, talent that I used to have once upon a time. And I wrote this anthem, and we we're hoping to keep cutting it short a little because it went on to two pages. It's also on the, on the back of that. I think we, I, I just want everybody to take a quiet moment to listen to this anthem. And soon thereafter, I do have the same colors of religions hidden under my table here. I would like to spread them out like a rainbow where we hold and uh, stand hands and, and uh, take a moment of silence to absorb this evening's beauty. So I called it the pot of gold in a tranquil spiritual confluence. When I look at a burnt pile of ashes and see a bright new sprout, smiling like a ray of hope, I wonder, what power springs this growth? One drop of water and a new life of hope? Amidst a pile of blasts, rubble, guns and death, I see hate and devastation. I seek a ray of hope. I wonder what power will bring this forth. One gesture of love to nurture the soul, and perhaps a new life of hope. In this tussle of black, white, brown, or yellow, all seemingly turning into ashes, I seek a ray of rainbow. I wonder what power can unify the colors to bring this forth, from ashes to the glory of a rainbow. In this struggle of religious strife, can then religion not emerge into a beautiful, unified, spiritual confluence? Do I see a ray of hope? I wonder what power religions that teach love, tolerance, sacrifice, peace, forgiveness can put forth. Is holding each other's hands not testimony to the power of spiritual solidarity and hope? All colors unify today in a silent prayer, like the colors of the glorious rainbow. I now understand the message in your rainbow, dear God, in its silent strength and magnificence, visible to all your children across the globe, a hidden message, all colors in unified solidarity. You show me what I seek in hope, teaching us to stand hand in hand today, all colors unified like a rainbow, have we found our pot of gold, I hope? Yes, I see a ray of hope. I think we can make a change as we stand together, hand in hand, as one. I think we can change if we can join all our voices as one. We are an American voice, 
Christian, Jewish, Hindu, Sikh, Mormon, Buddhist, Baha'i, Muslim, and every voice of God. And in doing so, dear God, as we stand hand in hand, we have become an American voice of humanism. Embarked on this journey, speaking the language of love and spreading a new culture of peace. One voice, so loud the power of which would silence the piercing blast of hate and instead spread the rays of sunshine like a glorious rainbow, rising from the hearts of our unique, special, diverse, multiple religions, but one message in a tranquil spiritual confluence. Dear God, I see the glorious message in your rainbow and in the glory of your colors, I now have a rainbow of hope as we stand hand in hand, diverse and yet unified. I now understand that in becoming one culture of peace and in one voice, we are now the rainbow and that in unity, peace and harmony is the pot of gold. Thank you. Once the candles are lit, um, I want the front row of all the uh, guest speakers to stand uh, holding hands around the lights, and the, the others uh, can do the same. I'm just going to pull out these little, I, like I said, I'm really trying to create a visual image uh, so that the youth can see that there is actually a visual unification of religions. Done. Oh, that's, I just keep all Please hold these gloves. Okay. <laughs> Well, I can <laughs> All right, I can, many people can hold one scarf. It doesn't yeah. have to be. Right? Just share the scarf, please. Please. I request everybody to stay in silence. Um, I think in a way this would symbolize that we all are going to stay unified and work towards harmony, peace, and unity.
there a good singer here? Okay, we're done with the side. <coughs> down to seven. What do you want to say? Uh, maybe imagine all the people, or we are the world, or this land is your land, or this land is your land. This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream Wall. Thank you very much again, everyone.